Hello everybody, in the last class we saw certain application of shift register and there we saw that a feedback of shift uh, the serial out as a serial in can give rise to uh, sequence generation uh, ring counter, Johnson counter. So, we shall look at uh, what is called linear feedback shift register in this particular class and its different uses. Okay. So, uh, by linear feedback shift register what we actually mean that the shift register outputs say it is a say length 8 we consider x 1, x 2, x 3 etc. Uh, like up to say x 8. Okay. So, it is going to a block where there is a feedback function and that feedback function uh, is generating a output okay, and that output is getting uh, fed as uh, serial in. Okay. And when we say linear, so this is the general case, linear means this fu function has got a, a linear relationship. The equation that we are having is a linear relationship. Okay. So, in this case uh, we write it in this manner C 1 x 1 C 2 plus C 2 x 2 to C 8 x 8 okay. and these coefficients are either 0 or 1. Okay. This is a binary world, we are, so it is 0 or 1. So, 0 means there is this value is not used. Okay. So, in another sense there is no tap from this shift register output to the this feed fu feedback junction, uh, function generation logic. Okay. So, that is not there okay. and if there is a 1 present that means that particular tap is present. So, that is how these CIs are defined either 0 or 1 tap is present or tap not present and this plus is the sum operation which is obtained through XOR. Okay. So, this is the way the circuit is developed and if we look at an example, so Y is X 1 plus X 2 plus say X 7 right. What does it mean? So, X 1, X 2 and X 7. So, these three taps are used, these three taps are used and they are, these three inputs are uh, summed up here, these three outputs of this uh, shift register is summed up here and fed as uh, input to the uh, C, uh, input Y as serial in. Okay. Uh, for example, if the, flip uh, the shift register is initially uh, loaded with this value 1001011. Then x1, x2, and x7 are these value, the one in the bold, right? Then y will be 1, uh, xor with 0, xor with 1. So, the value is 0. So, 0 will be fed back. So, with clock trigger, what will happen? So, this 0 will come here. So, everything else will get shifted 1001, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1 will come over here. So, at that time, your x1, x2, x7 are the one in the bold again here 0, 1, 0. So, 0, 1, 0. So, now the value is 1. So, next value 1 will be uh, getting in okay, and rest of the values will be shifted. Okay. And when we say non-linear that means other than some operations, so this is x1 and x2 or uh, uh, then some x7. So, these are the things that comes under non-linear feedback uh, which we not we are not discussing here. Our topic is linear feedback shift register. Okay. So, what we, has, we have seen uh, that is redefined in a manner uh, by which we introduce the term uh, feedback polynomial. Okay. So, in this instead of x 1, x 2 up to x 8, we represent the output of this uh, shift register of length 8 as x to the power 1, x to the power 2, x to the power 3, x to the power 4 etcetera up to x to the power 8 as if you know each one of them is delayed by 1 8. So, delayed by 1 8 d, uh, delayed by 2 unit d into d d square. So, d cube d 4. So, this is this is the idea. Okay. So, uh, in this sense you have got uh, x to the power 8 up to here. right? And uh, the input to it, it is not delayed, it is the out, it will come to the output after 1 clock trigger is not it. So, 
this input is represented as x to the power 0 or 1, x to the power 0 or 1. So, this one you will see in uh, the polynomial that or uh, the uh, function that is uh, you know getting represented and uh, usually in many cases since it is length 8 the requirement is of that of length 8. So, x a x to the power 8 is also uh, would be visible if it is of uh, you know. So, if it is of length n to x to the power n is also expected to be there, but uh, there could be another way the polynomial can be generated okay, without that. And in between wherever the connection is there, uh, that means this C i values are uh, 1, the tap is there otherwise it is 0. Okay. Right? So, for n bit shift register, we the degree we say will be of n, 8 bit here the degree is 8. And these are some examples. Okay. And if it is x 8, x 7 and x 1. Okay. So, uh, x 8, x 7 and 1. So, x 8, x 7 and 1 is this one. So, what does it mean actually? So, these two are getting exerted okay, and fed as input. So, this is the meaning of this polynomial. Is it okay? Tap from bit 7 and 8 are exerted and fed as serial input to bit 1. Now, such an arrangement okay, can give rise to can generate pseudo random sequence. Sequence generator we have seen. So, where we had seen of particular length if it is 8 bit it is uh, you know 8 uh, bit long it was right. Here we see what happens uh, when we connect in a particular manner. So, here there is a 4 bit uh, shift register. Okay. So, this 4 bit shift register this S and T is exerted and is fed as serial in. So, in terms of polynomial feedback polynomial just now we have defined this is x to the power 3 and this is x to the power 4 okay. and this and this input is 1. So, we will be representing this as x to the power 4 plus x to the power 3 plus 1 clear. Okay. This arrangement can be rewritten as this the meaning is the same. Okay. So, if this thing happens, then let us see how the with clock these states will evolve okay. and what will be the serial in in each case. So, it is if it is initialized with say 0 0 0 0 what will happen? So, if it is all 0 0 0 0. So, 0 0 exert output is 0. Okay. So, this 0 will be fed in so, again next value will be 0, 0, 0, 0. So, it will remain locked. So, it is not to be initialized with 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay. So, let us consider instead of all getting cleared, all was preset. Okay. All the flip flops were preset okay. and it was initialized with 1, 1, 1, 1. If there was no preset uh, option, then it was serially in or parallelly loaded, but somehow we have initialized the uh, shift register with a value 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay. Then what will happen? This uh, S and T are exert. So, 1 and 1 is exert. So, serial in will be 0. So, next value will be 0, 1, 1, 1. After that, this 1 and 1 again ex, uh, this 1 and 1 exert it is 0. So, again 0 comes and the rest of the things get shift, shifted. So, it is 0, 1, 1. So, then this 1, 1 again 0. So, this is 0, 0, 1. Now, 0 and 1 this is 1. So, this is 1, 0, 0. So, this way you will continue, you can work it out and you can see, you can see unlike the sequence generator which was of you know, uh, you know uh, length 4, in this case this output which is the uh, you know uh, you can take as final output of it, it continues up to a length which is 15. After that again it starts repeating. After that, it again it starts starts repeating, and the numbers you can see over here, these zeros and ones, it is what is known as pseudo random. Okay, it is not exactly random in the sense because it repeats after some time, and if you have number of these uh, n bit shift register, if the value of n is large, then of course you can understand that the length will be very large, and the formula that is used for uh, such case is 
the maximal length that is possible is 2 to the power n minus 1. 2 to the power n minus 1. All this 0, 0, 0, 0, that, that particular state is not uh, acceptable. Okay. Rest of the things are getting, rest of the states are getting circulated. Okay. So, with a higher values of n, you can understand that these uh, will get repeated after a uh, long value. Okay. After a very, the sequence will be very long. Okay. And almost equal probability of zeros and ones that is present in this particular sequence. Okay. Clear? So, this is a uh, one particular uh, way you can generate uh, pseudo random sequence using shift register okay? and you require minimum uh, you know hardware uh, uh, you know additional hardware and you can move very fast okay? these uh, things can uh, uh, be done in a very uh, uh, fast manner. Now, it is uh, to be noted that uh, the feedback that you take, okay, any kind of feedback will, may, will not give maximal length. Okay. So, for example, again for a, that, that 4 bit shift register we are talking about, instead of x 4 and x 3, okay, if it is x 3 and x 2, they are XORed and fed as serial in. So, the corresponding polynomial is x 3, x to the power 3 plus x to the power 2 plus 1. Okay. And we initialize with say 1 1 1 1, then the serial in is 0, so 0 1 1 1 and that way you continue. We shall see that over here it becomes okay, 1 1 uh, 1 0. Okay. After that again this 0 comes over here, this is t, okay. this is q r s t, this t comes here. So, it becomes 0, 1, 1, 1. So, this 0, 1, 1, 1 again repeats here and of course, after that it will repetition will start. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, this cycle length becomes 7. Earlier when it was taken from x 3 and x 4, x to the power 3 and x to the power 4 and it was 1, it was a maximal length that was 15 possible, 0, 0, 0, 0 was ruled out okay, because it will remain locked. So, uh, this is to be noted and uh, that gives us uh, uh, brings us to the discussion of uh, discussion on primitive polynomials. So, not all uh, polynomials will give us maximal length. So, the one uh, that gives us the uh, maximal length are called uh, is called primitive polynomial. Okay. And uh, uh, so, the example that you can see so, these are the polynomials that requires minimal number of minimum number of XOR gates for a given degree. So, we have uh, provided a, a table. So, uh, for degree 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, okay. so x to the power n plus x plus 1 that will give a pol primitive polynomial. This is not the only one, I shall uh, tell more about it uh, uh, shortly. So, but this will give you a primitive polynomial. right? So, for example, if it is say 7, so x to the power 7 plus x plus 1, 1 is the input that is coming here. So, 7th uh, flip flop and the first flip flop output right? exert together and fed as input, it will give a maximal length and maximum maximal length will be 2 to the power 7 minus 1. Okay? So, that is how it is there. So, for 5 x to the power 5 plus x to the power 2 plus 1. So, 8, 9, 10. So, this is what has been arrived at after uh, checking with uh, different combinations. Okay. Now, in each of these cases, when you look at it, right, and uh, what you can find that the necessary condition, it is not sufficient, but, but it is required that number of taps are even. Okay. Number of taps x to the power n and x, so x that is x to the power 7 and the first flip flop and seventh flip flop, fifth and second, eighth, sixth, fifth and first. Okay. So, ninth and fourth, tenth and 
third. Okay, so we have shown it up to say 10 degree, but you can extend and you can see that always the number of taps are even. Okay. And the other important thing is the tap numbers are co prime, like 7 and 1, 5 and 2, 8, 6, 5, 1, 9, 4, 10, 3, relatively between them, okay, there is no common divisor other than 1. Okay. So, that is a necessary condition, but it is not a sufficient condition. The other thing important here is if the tap sequence of a n bit uh, linear feedback strip resistor generating primitive polynomial is n, m, l, k and 0. n means that is the if it is a degree 8, okay, the last flip flop, so that is n and 0 is the input that is coming here x to the power 0. So, n and 0 are there and in between these are the different taps. Then if this that gives a primitive polynomial, then n minus n, n minus m, n minus l, n minus k, n minus 0, right, which the first one will give you 0 and the last one will give you n. So, basically they do remain, okay. And other values is just uh, n minus the other one, the particular tap number, okay that will also give a primitive polynomial, that will also give a maximal length uh, sequence and pseudo random number getting generated of that particular length. Okay. For example, uh, in this case, so if x to the power 5 x square x plus x square plus 1 is a primitive polynomial, then n minus m is x to the power 5 minus 5, 5 minus 2 and 5 minus 0, right. So, x to the power 5 plus x to the power 3 plus 1 is also a primitive polynomial. So, if you take it from 5 and 3, exhort it and feed it as input, that will also generate maximal length in this case 2 to the power 5 minus 1 long uh, sequence, okay, which will uh, repeat okay, pseudo random sequence. So, uh, what we had uh, discussed so far uh, is uh, constitutes uh, external feedback. Okay. So, uh, there can be linear, uh, there can be internal feedback also if uh, provision is there by which this uh, polynomials can be generated and implemented. Okay. So, internal uh, using internal feedback if we are implementing uh, the polynomial x to the power 4 plus x to the power 3 plus 1, okay, which was maximal length in case of uh, the external feedback which we have already investigated. Okay. So, then how it would look like? So, x to the power 4 and x to the power 3, they are exhort and fed as input to the flip flop over here. Okay. And of course, x to the power 4, this is uh, coming over here as 1 x to the power 0. So, this is how it would look like with internal feedback. Okay. And with this inter, uh, internal feedback, again if you look at uh, an initialization with say 1 1 1 1 right? and uh, then you can see for first few cases you can examine. So, uh, here s and t are exhort. Okay. s and t are exhort 1 and 1. So, the output is 0. So, s and t. So, this output is 0. So, 0 will be fed back here. So, next clock, right, this is becoming 0. And this was 1, 1 is fed back here 1. So, this other 2 ones are getting pushed. Okay. This 2 1 is getting pushed here. This 1 is coming over here and 1 1 exhort is 0. So, that is getting 0. Is it okay? So, next this 0 will come over here like this right. These two 1 are getting pushed over here and now 1 and 0, exhort is 1. Okay. So, this 1, this 1 exhort 0 is coming over here. So, this is the way it will evolve. Okay. And if you progress, you can see that it is coming to 4 1s again after 15 clock trigger, after 15 clock pulses. Okay. So, this also x to the power 4 plus x to the power uh, uh, 3 plus 1 gave maximal length for external feedback, for internal feedback also that we see that it is giving maximal length. Okay. So, 
but in this case the pseudo random sequence that is getting generated is 1 0 1 0 1. So, whatever you see over here and for the other case we saw something else. Okay. So, that number getting generated and fed as you know serially in could be different, but maximal length is uh, there for both the cases. Okay. So, this is one important thing we uh, take note of that uh, uh, primitive polynomial for external uh, feedback also works as maximal uh, primitive polynomial for internal feedback okay, and generates pseudo random sequence clear. Now, we look at uh, again uh, this uh, particular arrangement configuration earlier it was uh, actually evolving only uh, from internal uh, the you know state values and the feedback that is getting generated. Now, the feedback is there in addition we are putting an external input okay. and we would like to see uh, if it is of any use. Yes, it is of uh, important use in uh, error uh, control as error control code generation okay. and uh, this is used in what is called a cyclic redundancy check uh, code CRC code now. Okay. So, I shall uh, take you through an example and see how it is useful. So, the polynomial here is used x to the power 3 plus x plus 1 right. So, that means this is 1 to 3. So, this one okay. uh, this one first one it is paid back. Okay. Uh, uh, this x 3 x 1. So, this through internal feedback this is fed here and this one that is coming over here that is getting absorbed with the incoming uh, data stream okay, which we call as a message which we want to code. Is it clear? So, x 3 x plus x absorbed here going here and one is uh, coming over here which is now getting absorbed with the incoming data stream. right? Now, the message uh, that we are having let us consider it is a 7 bit message. These flip flops are initially all cleared right in this uh, register shift register okay. and to this uh, 7 bit uh, long message we append 3 zeros. We append 3 zeros signifying the values that are present here signifying the initial values of this shift register. Okay, right. So, now this is the input data stream 7 bit and 3 uh, appended with 3 zeros. Okay. So, now how this particular uh, circuit evolves with time with clock pulses. So, this is the clock pulse 0, this is serial in. So, initial value is 1. So, this is the 1 that you see here. So, these are all 3 zeros. Okay. Then what happens? Uh, this one and zero, right? This is zero. So D one is serial in and uh, exhaled with Q three. Serial in exhaled with Q three. D two is D two is this one. Okay. Q one and Q three getting exhaled, and D three is just whatever is Q three output that is going as Q T uh, Q two. Okay. And always we know for d flip flop whatever is the d n that is becoming q n plus 1 next clock value. Okay. So, we can examine in it in this manner. So, uh, the uh, first case serial in is 0, uh, serial in is 1 and q 3 is 0. So, the value is 1. right? So, what will go to q 1 in the next clock is 1. Okay. Then q 3 and q 1 exhort is 0, q 3 and q 1 exhort is 0. So, next clock it becomes 0 and what will uh, uh, q 3 will get? q 3 will get whatever is there in d 3, d 3 gets q 2. So, this is the one that will be there. So, next value will be 1 0 0. After that one comes as the serial input. So, 1 and 1 uh, sorry 1 and serial in and q 3. So, 1 and 0. So, 1 comes here. Then q 1 and q 3 right. So, 1 and 0. So, this is 1 
So, 1 comes here in the next clock and q 2 comes to q 3 okay, in the, the next clock. So, that becomes 1 1 0, then 0 comes here. So, that way it continues and you include this 0 also. Okay. So, 0 to 9, so 10 clock pulses are there. Once we complete this 10 clock pulses, right, the value over here what we see is 0 1 0 that is the remainder. Okay. So, that remainder now we attach as check bits to this 7 message bits. Okay. If the message bit was less than that, then we would have uh, or more than that, we will continue accordingly. But always we will be in our scheme of things, these three zeros, these three zeros will be there. Okay. Right. So, now uh, the uh, this is the what is getting transmitted, right? These message bits are getting transmitted. At the receiver end, what will you do? What will you do? So, receiver end now, these bits, okay, whatever is there, will be given as input. The circuit will be the same, and it will be initialized with 0, 0, 0, okay, and we will progress in the same manner, exactly the same manner, the way it has progressed at the transmitter end. And at the receiver end, uh, when if every bit is appropriately received, no error is there, then the remainder will become 0, 0, 0. Okay. If the remainder is anything other than 0, 0, 0, okay, then that means there is a error here. There is a error here in the incoming string. Okay. And this CRC code is specially useful for detecting burst error. First error means because of noise and all, uh, more than one bits, consecutive bits have uh, got uh, have become uh, wrong. Okay, so error has uh, uh, got into consecutive bits. Okay, so this is uh, the CRC code uh, generation, and uh, then it's uh, uh, at the receiver side, it's detection. Okay and this is the way the check bits are coming and there the shift register is useful. Uh, there are many applications of uh, LFSR. So, here I have listed a few and uh, majority of them uh, from its ability to generate pseudo random uh, sequence. Uh, if the counter does not require states to be uh, like 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0 that kind of you know this uh, sequential uh, numbers you know increment uh, is not required any kind of you know states can be there and uh, then uh, a first counter can be made of sufficiently long length so that is with in uh, bit we can go up to 2 to the power n minus 1 and uh, the other use of it is in test pattern generation of uh, which can be used for uh, testing uh, the faults in uh, application specific integrated circuits uh, scrambling is another uh, uh, use of LFSR output, these pseudo random sequences can be XORed with the message bit and uh, the resultant uh, signal pattern would look more noise like okay. and uh, the reverse can be done at the receiver end to get back the original message uh, and it is used uh, in cryptography also where the initial seed from which this pseudo random sequence is generated can serve as a cryptographic key and can be used for encryption first and at the receiver side uh, uh, for decryption. And you have already seen uh, its use in error control code, uh, uh, the cycle uh, uh, redundancy check, uh, the check bits, the way it has been uh, placed. And CRC 16 is uh, one popular such thing, CRC 32 is also there. Uh, for example, x to the power 16 uh, plus x to the power 15 plus x square plus 1 it could be one such polynomial and it can detect up to 16 burst error and many other uh, types of errors. Okay. So, with this we conclude, uh, we have seen that uh, LFSR can be used to, uh, uh, and to uh, generate uh, uh, primitive through primitive polynomials pseudo random sequences of a sufficiently long length okay and these primitive polynomials 
need to have even number of taps and uh, tap indices need to be relatively prime. This is a necessary condition, not sufficient. And CRC code is useful for error control as error control code and LFSR can be used uh, in cryptography and scrambling test pattern generation and many other areas. Okay. Thank you.